All right, in this video, we're going to look at start looking at triple integrals and changing the order of integration. So the idea is we're now integrating uh, over a three-dimensional region, x, y, and z. Those will be our domains. So really, we're kind of getting, uh, you wouldn't necessarily call it a volume. I've heard it called a hypervolume, because now you're in four dimensions, OK? So, but that's the idea. We're going to switch the order of integration. I'm not going to do any actual integration at all in these. Just talk about changing the order of integration. My first bit of advice would be make sure you can change the order of integration for just double integrals. If you can't do it with double integrals, um, you're certainly going to have a heck of a time doing it with tri triple integrals. So that would be my first bit of advice. But um, this picture is not the best. Well, it's, the picture's fine. Probably a little out of focus, but I've got an extra uh, diagram that I've sketched. But let me just read it to you real quick. It says, the figure shows the region of integration for the integral 0 to 1, root x to 1, 0 to 1 minus y, f of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. Okay, so we're integrating some function over this uh, three-dimensional uh, domain. And it says, what we're going to do is rewrite this integral as an equivalent iterated integral in the five other orders. Okay, so again, if you kind of look at this picture, it's kind of uh, the three-dimensional object. On the left side, there's kind of like this curtain, this curvy little curtain that's uh, the equation y equals root x. The roof of this three-dimensional object, the ceiling of it, would be uh, 1 minus y. And then the back of it is going to be, it's going to be bounded by the yz plane. And the bottom of it is going to be bounded by the xy plane. Okay, so to me it's almost like a little tent that's tucked into a corner and uh, sitting on the floor. And maybe the wind's blowing into it a little bit. Okay, but there's a roof and then kind of like the side of it. Okay, um, let's see a couple things here. Let me... Uh, give you my own artistic rendition. There it is. So again, this little curtain, or maybe kind of like the side of the tent where the wind's blowing into it. Uh, the roof of the tent is the equation z equals 1 minus y. Again, the floor xy plane, and the back of it, it's flush up against the wall, the yz plane. These were the, uh, this was the integral that was written down just a second ago. So, Maybe this is a little bit clearer to see, hopefully. Let's talk about why first. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why this even makes sense in the first place. And then I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to leave the inside limit of integration alone, and I'm going to switch the x and y. In a separate video, I'll do y first, and then in another video, I'll do x first. And we'll do, you know, all possibilities when we do that. Okay, so... There's, there's type 1, type 2, uh, type 3 uh, regions uh, of integration that they call them. I'm not going to go into that. Um, you know, I, it's like anything. It's terminology and it's useful, but you can look it up. Uh, just basically depending on uh, which variable you integrate with respect to first, you call it a type 1, type 2, or type 3 region. Okay, one thing that I think is worth noting at the very beginning if you, for example, if we have, suppose we integrate with respect to z first, that means our inside limits of integration are going to involve uh, equations of the form z equals something, z equals something. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a function, a, a function of the other two variables. So maybe I'll call this f of 1 and f sub 2. And basically, what these outside limits of integrations are going to be, they're going to be surfaces. Okay, they're going to be surfaces. And let's look at that in, uh, you know, in comparison to this one. So another thing that I think about, if we're integrating with respect to z first, okay, and that's the way it's set up right now, I think about basically a line parallel to the z-axis. So kind of a line going just up and down, through my, uh, through, my, through my space. And what I'm doing is I'm imagining that line, that, that line that's going straight up and down, I'm imagining that it's going through my surface, okay? So really, if you think about this line that's going, uh, you know, up and down, I think about where it would first enter the surface. Well, it would first enter the surface on the floor, okay? You know, on the floor of our tent. What's the equation of the floor of the tent? 
Well, the equation of the floor of the tent, that's where z equals 0. So you're, the, the, the equation that describes the bottom surface would be uh, the equation z equals 0. And that's exactly what our lower limit of integration is. It says, hey, it's z equals 0. Well, again, imagine this, this, uh, this vertical line. So if you punch through the bottom of the tent, and then you, know, you just start to exit the, uh, the roof of the tent, I think, what's the equation of that surface? What's the equation of the surface of the tent? The roof of the tent, I should be saying. What's the equation of the roof of the tent? Well, we're told that the equation is z equals 1 minus y. That's the equation of the surface. So that's the upper limit of integration. So again, bottom surface, the floor of the tent is z equals 0. The roof of the tent is z equals 1 minus y. So that's where the inside limits of integration are coming from. Okay, next we're integrating with respect to y and then with respect to x. So uh, let's talk about that. What I now need to do is, okay, so we integrated with respect to z first. I now need to uh, kind of imagine, I always imagine, you know, uh, so along the z-axis, if the sun was just directly over the tent, way high above this tent up in the sky, you know, where would the shadow be on the ground? Well, the shadow would be in the xy plane. Okay, sorry for all my tent and sun analogies here. Um, this is how I always thought about it, so... Again, this is what you're stuck with. Um, so, you know, kind of, a, you know, what would be the footprint of this tent, for example? Well, it would be the x and y coordinates uh, that, that comprise the domain of this three-dimensional object. It would be the x, y coordinates that are in the, in the x, y plane. Well, okay. So, in the x, y plane... I'm going, I'm going to, you know, think, what's the equation of these, cur of these, uh, these curves now? Well, they tell us that it, it's, uh, the surface is y equals square root of x, but also in the plane, this would be the equation, this little curve that I'm, you know, shading right now, that would be the equation y equals square root of x. So there it is. And then we also need this other equation. Well, that's simply going to be the line y equals 1. Okay, so there's the little region that we're now integrating over. I've got it shaded in here. Let's go back to um, the way it was set up. So now it's kind of like doing a double integral. Okay, you've kind of reduced it to a double integral. Well... If I want to integrate with respect to y first, okay, so remember if we integrate with respect to y, we don't want to cross the y-axis, so I always just draw my line up and down. The lower limit of integration is going to be the equation of the bottom curve, which is, well, y equals square root of x, that's what we have. The upper limit of integration is going to be, you know, the equation of the top line, which is simply y equals 1. So that's where that's coming from. Last but not least, it says, hey, we're integrating with respect to x on the outside. All we're looking for is the smallest x-coordinate to the largest x-coordinate. Well, y equals 1 and y equals square root of x are going to intersect at the point 1 comma 1. So I know that the smallest x-coordinate is 0, the largest x-coordinate is 1, and that's where our very final outside limits of integration are coming from. Whew. Okay, that was a, a lot of work there, Patrick, just to explain what the heck was going on. So again, uh, I think they're confusing, so in the hope of being thorough. Okay, let's switch it up now. Let's do uh, the first actual bit of work. So I'm still going to leave... I'm still going to integrate with respect to z first. Okay, then nothing changes. The floor of the tent is still the equation z equals 0, and the roof of the tent is still the equation z equals 1 minus y. So that hasn't changed. But instead of integrating with respect to y first, I'm going to integrate with respect to x, and then we'll integrate with respect to y. Again, all I'm really 
changing now are the dx and dy. And all that really tells me is I have to look at the curve in the xy plane. I should say the region in the xy plane. Well, okay, that's what we had just a second ago. Here it is. I'm going to draw it one more time. So this is y equals 1, and we said this is y equals root x. Okay, well, I want to integrate, I want the inside limits of integration. I want to integrate with respect to x. So now I'm going to do just a similar thing. If I'm going to integrate with respect to x next, I'm going to draw my little line horizontally, again, so that I don't, cross the x. And now, the, uh, to get the limits of integration, the upper limit of integration is simply going to be the rightmost curve. Well, the rightmost curve is y equals square root of x. But since we're integrating with respect to x, the inside limits of integration need to be of the form x equals something and x equals something. Well, Okay, so again, we said the rightmost curve, y equals root x, that's going to be my upper limit of integration, basically says isolate the x. Well, if we square both sides, we would get, well, y squared equals x. So that's going to be my upper limit of integration, the curve x equals y squared. The leftmost curve is going to be my lower limit of integration, but the leftmost curve is the y-axis, the y-axis is just the line, well, x equals 0. So that's going to be my lower limit of integration. Last but not least, to get the, uh, the values for y, again, we just look at the smallest y-coordinate, which in this case is 0, and the largest y-coordinate, which is 1. Okay, so it's not changing just because it's always 0, 1, 0, 1, but they certainly could. So now we've got it set up. We've switched them. Okay, and then whatever the function is. All right, so that is going to be uh, part one of my triple integrals. So again, it doesn't feel like we've done much, but I'm going to use, I kind of spent a little more time explaining again kind of what's going on, because if that makes sense, hopefully it does, um, we're just going to basically do the analogs um, to this. Uh, so we're just going to look at it from a slightly different perspective, but the ideas are going to be the same. Again, just the curves and the geometry can be tricky to me, but uh, we'll do uh, uh, two more videos. First, where we integrate with respect to x, then we'll do yz and then zy, and then we'll integrate with respect to y, where we do xz and zx.